What's going on guys? Stevie from the Minimasters here and today I'm going to show you how to replace a rusted out cap corner. Alright guys, so you can see the infamous rusted out cap corner. I only wish it was just this area, but it really is a lot of it. And I'm sure for a lot of you this is all too familiar of a sight. I recently put a video up showing you how to replace your seat belts. And what's funny about that is I mentioned something about getting rid of pulling the seat belt bolt that's normally here and how it may not work because it might be too rusted. Well, I went to pull mine out and it actually tore out the whole mount, which I kind of knew was gonna happen because you can see this, this is just really bad. So, so what do we do first? Well, first you're gonna have to order some patch panels and I've got a nice little collection going on over here. And uh, you can source them just about anywhere that does them, but I got them from Ray Bucks. It's one of my favorite places. You're gonna need this cab corner here. And then because mine has that rust right here, you're actually gonna need that piece. Now you can buy a short little piece, but it doesn't come up as high. Or you can buy this full silt piece, which apparently I'm told you can actually wrap this around everything, okay? And kind of almost cover it over. I'm not gonna do that. Typically what I do is I just cut out the section I need and this piece right here, because normally this piece rusts. Now, you need to have working seat belts in your truck for you know, the law and for some states that require inspection. So here's your seat belt bolt hole. So instead of replacing the whole sill, which you can do, the rest of my sill is perfectly fine. So I'm actually gonna cut this somewhere about here and actually only replace this section. Okay, the trick with doing this is not cutting out everything because you really don't need to. There's not, there's no real structural inte integrity that's being violated, but it really becomes a chore when you have to replace a lot of this stuff. And I have done a full side on the driver's side, so let's try not to, uh, you know, make this too much of a project here. So, what are we going to do first? You're going to have to pull this gasket away, it just comes off. You're going to want to undo this uh, tab piece here, and then you're going to want to roll back some of the flooring. Now, we are going to be welding, and so you're going to want to cover everything in your cab, okay, because you don't want welding sparks to touch anything. You also don't want any of the, the dirt and dust and everything from, you know, your, your angle grinder, which is what I'm going to use to cut, getting all over everything. So you want to cover up as much as possible. Definitely cover your door and uh, that will ensure everything will look just the same when we come back here. So, I'm gonna do all that and we'll come back for the cutting. All right, so I took the time to cover over everything, including the door, get myself all arranged, get my angle grinder ready, you know, really get this kicked off right. So before we get started, you're gonna wanna take pictures of some of this stuff and you're probably like, ah, but well, you know, it all goes back together like puzzle pieces not that simple so ready this is our new cab corner and you'll notice how this is curved and this is straight okay so that's an instance of where you're gonna have to shape this to fit the new contour because this piece of metal is curved it is not straight okay so this isn't like a factory uh, you know improvement or anything so but if you didn't know that then this what you would have run into this as a problem. So that's why you want to take pictures of everything. If you're cutting everything out, you definitely want to take some measurements so you have an idea of how it goes back. Your biggest measuring factor is actually your door because when you close your door, that's going to tell you where this should line up and this, provided that your whole door is already aligned. So there's a lot riding on that. So as far as cutting goes, like I said, I'm going to try to get away with not cutting out as much as possible. So one thing you're going to do is kind of go around and inspect. Now you can see some of the paint is chipping um, back behind here, but you can feel it. it's not, you know, bulged out and exposed like a rusted corner. So we don't have to go that far. But as you can see here, this clearly is, you can see there's these paint bubbles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up to here. So I'm going to cut here and down. All right. And uh, that's another thing too, is then I'll be able to weld here on the corner and I don't have to reach behind the bed or, or move the bed at all. So I'm gonna cut around here and I'm pretty much gonna follow it all the way around here. So all that's gonna get cut out, 
okay? Once that is removed, then we can start working on getting this underside here, and then we'll come along and, you know, do this. But I want to get this out first because that's the big thing that needs to be done. So, I'm going to get cutting. So here we are, guys. As I said, I cut here, here, and straight across. And it gives you a pretty good idea of the damage, okay? There's normally a panel, like a piece that comes down here. As you can see, that's pretty much rusted away. And this is another big problematic thing with these trucks is this foam here. And there's actually a hole right through the panel down here. And they just, they just fill the thing with foam and plug it. I don't think it really works that well. And when water gets into it, I think after a while, it just acts like a sponge and then rusts everything out. Now, here's the piece that I cut out. And uh, this is a good time to really look this piece over because you can see where the rust kind of starts to stop, okay? That's a really good indication of where you should stop when working on this because, you know, you want to try to get as much of the bad rust out okay if it's just surface rust then you can leave it but if it really starts flaking like right here see how it starts to go up a little farther that's not good okay so that may mean uh, we may have to take it up a little farther I'm actually gonna look behind at that but before I start going to that I'm gonna try to cut a little bit more away so I can have a better view so my next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my cut here and uh, try to cut this out I just basically want this whole floor section here out and then uh, I'm also gonna cut some of this away okay and then I'll bring you back all right so here we are guys it's all cut out and removed here's the piece now I removed it as one piece and at one point I was half tempted to take it out in two pieces but I kept it one piece because this makes it easier to hold it up to the new piece and get a, a rough measurement for the piece that's going in that way I'm not having to guess here because when you do take this out, sometimes you do bend some metal around it and it's not quite the same. But you'll notice, aside from using the angle grinder to do some of these straight cuts, I actually drilled a lot of it. And that's because the trucks, if you didn't know, are actually spot welded together and then they go back with seam sealer, essentially a kind of uh, oil-based caulk, and they caulk all the seams, okay? In fact, this is some of the, the seam sealer right here and it actually failed because uh, some of it does, I think, dry out and fail. Matter of fact, I also, when I was under there, I noticed a spot where the guy clearly just like went off the line and didn't even seal it. So who knows, maybe that's why these things rust out sometimes. But anyway, spot welded, seam sealer, and that's how they're put together. So all you need to do is get yourself a drill bit on your drill, drill them out, and then you don't always get the entire weld. So that's where you need a body panel chisel like this one, and you just slip it in between and you just hammer away and it essentially cuts the, the rest of the weld out and you can pull it out in one nice piece like this, okay? So I strongly recommend you go get one of these. The trouble with a carpenter's chisel is one side's flat and one side's got the bevel, okay? And it's also not thin enough. And you're also gonna wail on this for some of them. So that's not something you wanna do with a carpenter's chisel. So what I'm gonna do next here is I'm gonna cut a little bit more out of here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back and actually replace that with a flat piece of steel. So I have just some spare steel lying around. Um, another thing that's cool is because we're not using the entire cab corner to replace this, the rest of that piece that comes up here, I can actually cut little bits out of that and actually weld a lot of this back in place. But the nice thing about using, drilling out the spot welds and everything is all you have to do is put the new piece in and actually spot weld back everything else, okay? Which is really, really cool it's it's awesome so okay so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna clean up all this junk clean up as much of the inside here as possible um, as you can see the rust doesn't go let me get some light on this the rust doesn't go up as far uh, as we thought so we actually don't have to cut any more out we can just clean it up and uh, make it look good I have some weld through primer so we can actually prime this so that it's all ready to go, and that way we won't have any more issues. So. All right, guys, here we are, all cut, cleaned, and prepped. Just a little weld through primer, and we're set. As you can see, I decided to take out more of the sill because it was actually heavily pitted, and when I went to clean it, I just, you know, I just started seeing more wrong with it. As you can see, there's some holes and things here, 
And like I said, because you can drill out the, you know, spot welds, it's just pretty simple to just replace it, you know, now that we're here. Um, as you can see, what I've got to weld to isn't great, but the nice thing is with the doubled up metal, I can just fill a lot of that stuff in there and I don't have to worry about really cutting back the floor anymore. You can also back it with more steel, but uh, my method of filling in always works, so that's what I'm gonna end up doing there. So <clears throat> the next step is to put our sill piece in, which is uh, this guy, but the new piece, and that will help establish where everything else will go, and what I mean by that, that will help me figure out what piece is to cut for here, um, it will help me figure out where this piece is going to sit and of course the channel that the uh, door gasket fits into. Uh, pretty much the last piece to go in is the actual cab corner here. But the sill, that's what sets it all up and that's what's got to go in first. So I'm actually going to hit um, anything that is going to be sandwiched between two pieces of metal, I'm going to hit with some weld through primer. Um, you can look it up. Uh, my favorite company, Eastwood, sells it. That's this. Uh, that's who makes this sound deadener. They make it. Um, Duplicolor has there. So I actually have one from Eastwood, one from Duplicolor. So I'm going to hit everything. Like that's that's going to be a lot of stuff that's just going to be hidden away. So I'm going to hit all that with some weld through primer, and then I'm going to start set up welding. And then uh, when I get the sill welded in, I'll bring you guys back. All right, guys. Here we are. I have the sill piece tacked in place. Now the big trouble you're going to run into here is getting a good ground for your welder. Uh, as you can see, some of my welds are slightly raised. And as well, weld through primer is like only so good too. That can also cause spattering and not so great welds. But I really, really want it because I just, I just don't want to have this thing rust. So I'm taking all the precautions possible. If I really get sick of it, maybe I'll just hope I, I can seam seal everything back in place. Now what you're looking at here is I'm just going to end up filling this in with some metal. Uh, trying to weld thin rusted metal just is not fun and it blows through like crazy. As you can see here, I even used a copper backer and it looks hideous. And um, I just don't feel like having to sit here with a grinder all day to make it look good. So that's what we're doing here. Now this is the part where I have more of a blow through here with the rust. So I'm actually going to cut this shape bend it slightly and try to form it into the shape that I need to fit here and then uh, do that for here. Once that's done, the real complicated like metal work is finished and we can actually get on with you know trying to get this cab corner thing together. But the thing that's going to eat up a lot of time is just trying to fill all the rust holes and things and really get this thing watertight, which is the name of the game. Here you are guys, all welded up. Don't mind my hideous welds. I hate them just as much as you guys. They could have been better, much better. But that's the trouble with trying to weld metal that's partially rusted. It just doesn't work out really well. So with that being said, if you guys are doing this, you have a little extra time, just cut back up to here and just replace it with new metal because trying to weld over it's just impossible. I ended up just taking plates and welding it in front of it. Thank God seam sealer exists because we're going to seam seal the hell out of this, including the underside. Not only that, but it's going to get undercoated and painted and it's just going to be impervious every other way than the metal itself. There are no holes in it. Okay, I did that much. Uh, down here, as you can see, butts up and maintains the profile. For some reason, the new piece does not quite fit. It's just a little bit taller here. Everywhere else it fits, so that's just going to end up being like a Bondo thing. Okay, so back to the essential part of this video, which is actually doing this cab corner here. So we're first going to have to cut this little sloping piece. So I, all I want is just this piece here, and then we're going to cut off that little long runner, and it's going to run all the way down here, and that's what our gasket will uh, clip into. So I'm going to go cut all that, fit it, and tack weld it in place, and I'll bring you guys back. All right, guys, so here we are. Here's this piece, I've removed this little like shell piece that can cover this. I just don't want as many layers upon layers of steel. To me, that's just a recipe for rust. But anyway, so I cut that off and I've placed this right here. Now this is how, you know, you get your cut. Okay, most people are like, so what do you measure? Nope. So put it here, you know, clamp it, and then take your Sharpie and mark it. And then you just cut along your Sharpie line and you've got a perfect 
butt weld right here. That's it. Now, as far as the end here, we're not gonna go all the way up. I'm gonna actually cut some of this back and then we're just gonna weld it in place and that's how we're gonna get our other side there. But overall, as you can see, coming along. All right, guys, so here we are. It is welded all the way. I did say I would tack weld it and bring you back, but decided to go ahead, ground everything down, made it nice and smooth. Both ends, same way. You'll notice there's a couple rivets here because normally you don't weld anything here, you spot weld, but you know, rivets are just so clean, you don't have to worry about anything. So I broke out the rivet gun and, and put them all in there. And uh, all it's ready is just for a little seam sealer, both sides, and this thing is watertight. So moving on, same uh, kind of process. I'm gonna cut as close as I can to uh, this piece um, by holding up the new cab corner and then try to fit it and then we're just gonna weld it all back in place. Like I said, I'm gonna weld here, here, and here. And these are the most important. Notice how smooth and you're not gonna see these once paint go on them. That's because these are presentation, I mean, you know, as far as presentation goes for jams, but anything that's visible is something I'm worrying about. This other stuff's gonna get covered. So I'm gonna go and cut this out weld it in. All right guys, here's the finished cab corner and sill for that matter. Started at 8.30 a.m., finished 7 p.m. Yeah, I'm tired. So next step for here, which I'm not going to go through, but you know, you guys consider this if you're doing this project, is to bondo and get rid of all the imperfections in the uh, weld job, obviously my fault. This was a, a tough one. And uh, paint, seam seal, the whole nine yards, and you're good to go. So I always have some takeaways every time I do one of these projects. There's like that, mm, I should do that next time, or I wish I had done that. The one for this job, uh, well, from the previous job to this one is to seam seal it and paint it and all that because I did develop a little rust on the other side and I was playing catch up to try to stop it. It's not worth it. It's better just to get it from the get-go, done and over with. It's just better that way. The one from this job is definitely cut out more metal, uh, that rusty metal. It is just so hard to weld to. Can you do it? Yeah, it is a total pain. It's just much easier to put new stuff in and go from there. Especially with this cab corner, as you remember, I just cut right here and here. The trouble was, even if the, it was just a little bit pitted, for some reason, it's just so thin. I don't know if that's because the old metal's thin and the new metal is thicker or what, but it was definitely a lot harder this time around. And when I did the other side, I actually replaced all the way around and, and it was just a nicer looking, uh, you know, because I didn't have to weld the corner, the corner just looks better. And of course, the corner's part of the essential lines of the truck. Now, that's not to say Bondo will take this all out and you won't see any of it, but, you know, clean welts. That's just something I like. So anyway, guys, that's all for me. Time for me to wrap this up and just sleep. So hit the subscribe icon over here. Check out some of the other videos I have. A lot of cool stuff, more to come. I'm Stevie from the Minute Masters. Thanks for watching.